Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord. Now, as you can see, we're still at Sargoth. I actually wanted to besiege this in the previous episode, but we kept getting interrupted. And uh, let me just say that I did attempt, as you can no doubt tell from the walls being a little bit damaged, I did attempt to do the standard strategy for building onagers. I built four, I mean, you know, I built four onagers, tried to get them into my reserve siege equipment. And it just didn't work. I was actually up against a whole bunch of catapults, but it seems like they have actually changed their defenses to ballistas now. So, well, whatever the case, I changed my tactic and we are now going to be leading an assault with a battering ram and siege towers and so on. And we're just going to have to deal with the remaining units because, of course, we did have a sally out in the previous episode and this is going to be kind of interesting because we did have oh yeah i actually forgot to do that one thing mm. i have a surprise for you i have a surprise it is maybe not the best surprise ever but uh it is a surprise that i think you will like in galtha in galtha himself decided to attack me with 89 troops yes he tried to attack me with a very small army, and I took him prisoner. I don't know why he did that, but we've seen very, very weird things happen in these kinds of situations, especially in, in siege defense mode that the AI tends to go in, and I'm going to die. <laughs> oh, no, please don't. No, 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 no. I do not want to die in this particular situation. That would not be very good. But I'm hopeful that we will be able to uh, maybe do something here. Oh, no, there's, a, there's someone over there as well. Where do I take cover? That's the point. Where do I take cover? It seems like it's almost impossible. Yeah, so this is, I think, where you might destroy the wall. And you might be able to get through if you actually do uh, succeed in doing the thing that I failed with. But, uh, yeah. This is going to be kind of interesting because I'm literally at 1% HP. I can only hope that our siege tower will get there relatively soon and then we can actually enter the keep. Well, that doesn't seem to have worked out too well, does it? Yes, our siege battering ram has been destroyed now, unfortunately. And I have been shot in the leg. Well, I will no longer be an adventurer, so that's absolutely fine. I really don't mind... Um, dying in this situation i feel like we have taken way too much damage initially i should have just stayed back but again this is basically my i don't know 15th siege well not even that really basically my i don't know fifth town siege in the entirety that i've been playing so i'm still getting a bit more used to the fact that the archers of the opponent are going to be quite accurate you know they're going to be quite accurate because in, in comparison warband you can kind of anticipate where the enemy is going to be shooting from even so i still end up dying so it is going to be one of those things but i very much hope that we're going to be able to succeed here it seems like over here is doing a lot better than on the left flank so that's going to be a bit problematic but i i very much hope that we will be able to do something here we have lost a lot of troops so far and of course, that is the way things go when uh, you have a, a, a battering ram and the siege towers and so on. Because, as I said, I just could not make the Onager strategy work. I tried for quite a while, and in the end, uh, it just didn't. I don't know why. So, um, yeah, catapults. Catapults are actually very good. If you do get uh, catapults as the defender's weapons then I'm not entirely sure how you're supposed to beat them because trebuchets take a long time to build so you're going to get interrupted almost all the time onagers do take a long time to build but not as long as trebuchets so it might be usable but if the onagers do not hit the catapults and don't deal damage to them then you're not going to be able to do anything there either. If you build ballistas, which are probably the best chance that you might have, then you're going to need to build all four and then put all four out at the same time. But do bear in mind that ballistas, if they are targeted all by the same line of catapults, so if, if every single one is, is targeted down by four of them, then they're going to die instantly because they have a very small amount of HP. But they do do a lot more damage over time than the onagers do so it's really just a toss-up of what you want out of your siege equipment but 
personally, I feel like ballistas would probably be the best, but I'm not entirely sure about that. So it is really just a, uh, probably just a personal preference thing, but I don't know what would work best at this point. I need to do more testing on that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I have been doing a little bit of testing in my, in my private time in a separate save away from recording and things like that. And I wanted to try and get a little bit more of a, a better handle on things about what is actually going on with these siege weapons and which one is going to work out better in, in various different scenarios and situations. Same thing with, with units and everything like that as well. So I'm kind of trying to work out what kind of style is going to be the best for me in the long run. And uh, obviously I don't want to do that, that kind of testing in in our series here because that would uh, you know that would just ruin things completely so you know it's uh, it's kind of nice that uh, I do have the opportunity to do that but there you go we actually did achieve a victory as is to be expected of course I mean we we should have really won this uh, quite a while ago but uh, it did take quite a bit of time to get there and let's have a look okay so I don't have enough for any prisoners so I will just have to let those go and, uh, oh yeah, actually, I do have Ingalfa in our prisoner's hold, and I have not executed him yet, amazingly enough. I'm not entirely sure how he's even still in here and hasn't escaped, but there he is. So we're going to execute him now, because let's face it, he deserves it. He deserves it more than basically most people, because he, he is a defector, and he, he betrayed the Vlandians. And, uh, well, technically, I am a defector as well, or Barney is, more specifically, because he, of course, did defect from the Sturgeons. But I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do in that situation, being a very, very weak vassal where I only had a... Uh, I don't think I had that, that large. I think I had... I don't even know how many I had in my army at that point, but I had a very diminished army at that point so yeah anyway i'm just going to save here because we have to vote on drapand castle apparently that was taken again <laughs> which i don't particularly appreciate all right so these guys hate me these guys hate me and these obviously do not because this is me so i'm not entirely sure who i really want to give this to i guess we'll just give this to this guy whoa massive massive relation increase okay we'll give it to that guy i guess Increased by 86? What? That is crazy. Okay, that's actually kind of cool that you can rectify your relation standpoint with some guy just literally by voting for something that he wants. For example, Belgia, I think will probably have um, a pretty decent... Yeah, look at that. Increased by 88 to minus 12. That actually seems really good. Okay, I'm happy with that. Very, very happy with that. Okay, good. So let's have a look and see what's actually going on. Wait a minute. How did they take this? I, wait, what, what? Uh, you know, that's, that's what I mean. I just don't exactly know when that happened. I mean, look at this guy. This guy coming from that direction. Look at him. He's literally got 32 Vlandian recruits in his army. I personally don't think he would be able to do that much damage to a uh, a town that like uh, like Jaculan. Jaculan is is just like insanely well defended. I really have no idea how that would happen in a million years. In a million years that would happen. So, I have no idea. I guess there is an army over there somewhere and they had, I don't know, 500, 600, maybe a thousand units. I have really no idea because as far as I remember, the garrison in that town had, I don't even know. I think as far as I'm aware, it had about 600 units in there. And I have, wait a minute, Sylvind? Are you serious? Sylvind is also a defector to the Southern Empire. Ooh, this is unforgivable, Sylvind. This is so totally unforgivable that I will be hunting you down. And I just cannot believe all of these people are defecting. I have no wish to fight you. Well, I, I don't want to fight you either. You should have stayed on our side. 
I really have no idea what's going through these people's heads. They're literally defecting when we are starting to turn things around. Ah, I know I say this almost every episode now, but it's true. That's not what we should be seeing right here. We should not be seeing people leaving and joining our enemies. I think that's really sad, actually, because we've been fighting alongside these people for a very lengthy period of time. And I feel like them throwing all of that camaraderie away is extremely sad and disappointing. Wow. Okay. Uh, I, I don't even know what's going on with them, but... They obviously don't care. They obviously don't care about the camaraderie. They, they just care about lands and, and money, and that's generally how it was, especially in Vlandia, I feel. Vlandia seems to be more of a more of a faction that has a lot of internal problems in regards to relationships and things like that in, in you know, within the Lords and, uh, and things like that, because I remember reading that on the... Uh, on the wiki, I believe, when I was looking at the factions to begin with, and I remember reading that on a dev blog as well uh, that, that the developers made, and it was basically just, you know, covering all the different factions and everything, and basically being like, okay, yeah, so Vlandia is going to have a lot of, a lot of infighting, and their their units are, whoa, 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 I should get out my shield here real quick, um, but yeah, a lot of their a lot of their lords are going to be fighting in and amongst in and amongst themselves, and that's actually something that I didn't really worry about until this point. <laughs> I thought to myself, "Nah, they're gonna they're gonna stay with us, right? You know, they're gonna stay with us. They're gonna try and uh, you know survive the overwhelming odds that we will potentially have in this situation." And uh, I, I thought I could count on them, you know. I really thought I could count on them, but obviously the AI is very, very much looking out for itself, especially when it comes to Vlandia. I feel like, mm, I feel like their their personalities are going to be quite interesting to interact with, and going forward, we're obviously going to be able to experience most of that. Because don't worry, you know, as soon as this campaign is over, if I can get it to. Uh, be a somewhat stable environment where we're not constantly fighting for, for thieves and things like that but if I can finally do that then um, don't worry because we're gonna literally be fighting and playing with every single faction we're going to get very very familiar and acquainted with a lot of the lords and a lot of the ladies in the game and we will see exactly what's going on with them over that time and being able to kind of know which which lord is never going to backstab you that's a really very valuable piece of information and certainly something that i am going to be very interested in as well because as it stands right now most people have dropped us like a stone and i got to say i'm not i'm not best pleased about that very much not so uh, let me see is anyone else wanting to join me nope Seems not. Oh, I should have. I, you know, yeah. I should have uh, executed her while I was in that screen because I always forget to do it. Then, let me see if I can do it now. Mm, there we go. All right. So there we are. Nice. Okay. So she's gone, and I think we. Mm, I think we probably want to see if I can take back this town. As I say, very very strange. Oh, look at this, Calatild, Calatild left. Oh, I can't believe that. That's actually very disappointing indeed. Calatild was one of our main lords who would run around and lead armies against the opponent. But now, no longer. No longer. So, this is what we currently have at our disposal. So, we've got, obviously, some mercenaries. We've got this guy from the Banu Samal. And we have Morkon. And then we, of course, have Dirthart and Belgia as well and that's pretty much it where's where's Durthart? Where, where there he is there he is okay yeah so very disappointing show in my opinion i am very surprised why are they uh -huh. oh okay okay <laughs> uh i know what happened now this did not get taken this did not be this is not a, a result of a siege 
this is a result of a lord defecting from their original faction. And I believe that was Calatild. So she has defected and now made it very difficult for us to try and resupply in this area. And I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to rectify that. Hmm. We have to eliminate her, obviously. That is going to be the, the main thing that we have to do. And if we can eliminate her, then obviously we'll have a much easier time of things. Oh, look, here's Dothart. Oh, very nice. He's got a 368 strong army. 354, actually. The Lake Rats have now left Vlandia's kingdom, which is kind of weird. All right, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to follow Dothart and see what he's actually going to get up to here, because... Uh, yeah, it still it grinds my gears, you know? It grinds my gears like no one's business to, to see perfectly able people in terms of this 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 lord here just defecting for no good reason. Ah, yeah, that's really, really sad. Okay, well, seems like we are actually traveling to besiege something, which is actually going to be quite fun. So, I, I guess we'll do it. I mean, why not? You know, we've got 520. I just hope that I don't have to supply any of the uh, any of the units with my own food, because I don't have that much food. I mean, I've got 246, which is pretty decent, but I uh, don't really want to end up losing half of that just to help the AI do nothing at all, because, let's face it, the AI is not exactly the smartest, smartest thing ever. So, you know, it's smart. Don't get me wrong, I think it is actually smarter than it was in Warband by a pretty considerable amount, but, well, it's still AI, and it's still not going to be the same as what a player would do or anything like that. But yeah, I'm actually sharing my food with starving soldiers now. I'm happy to share the food, don't get me wrong, I think it is perfectly acceptable for me to share the food, but I do not see why I should share the food when they don't come perfectly prepared. Anyway, it seems like he wants to go in. Why do you why do you want to go in at this point? They still have bo both walls up, and it, they, he doesn't even have a battering ram or a siege tower up or anything like that. This is going to be an absolute bloodbath. You know what? I'm actually going to abandon this army. I really don't want to join that particular siege. They're going to lose so many units. I wouldn't be surprised if they literally just end up losing in general. Let me actually have a look and see how many troops they have here. They have 123. Okay, but yeah, Death Art, remember, he started with 350 units. He's now under 220, and look at that. He had to give it up, and there's only 43 units there. Hey, come, come back here, man. What's he doing? What is he actually doing? I'm going to do it then. This is absolutely preposterous. I can't believe him. He's kind of silly, isn't it? Oh, and now I'm going to get attacked by this guy. Oh, okay. Hello there. All right, so we have 22 volunteers and peasants and so on. Okay, this should be pretty easy for us, but i got to be a bit careful. I'm going to just uh, level up a couple more units here and try to get some more people to join us. But, wow, I, I just can't believe him. Like, if he had just stayed in there a little bit longer, he would have been able to take that castle, and then I wouldn't have to do all the heavy lifting. Oh, my. Really? Can't believe it. Morcon, are you serious, Morcon? Come on now, let's attack this guy together. Yeah, there we go. He's joined us. That's great. Okay, so I'm hopeful that uh, Sargoth will now not get taken by Kalatild because now I'm super worried about basically every single vassal defecting and taking their thief with them because that is exactly what has happened now. Twice. I think, because the last time that that happened, I think Galend was taken and transferred ownership over, because I'm pretty sure that did not get taken. I mean, it did not get besieged, shall we say. And I think that was in, uh, what was that, part 46 or something like that? I think that was part 46 where Galend got taken, and I was just thinking to myself, how did that get taken? I didn't get a notification, and then I complained for however many minutes about the fact that I didn't get a notification, but as far as I'm aware, that was not actually a true siege, and instead, it was someone defecting from our ranks, which is exactly, I think, what happened, which I gotta say is 
devious and uh, certainly something that I am not very pleased about. So very interesting that they would decide to do that. I'm very, very surprised. I wouldn't have expected them to do that when we are actually starting to push back against the opponent. And personally, I feel like this is probably the best shot that we have had so far. And if they all stayed with me, uh, we would be in a really, really strong position. But no, they, they decided to not do that. Very surprising. Hmm. I am still confused. I am so, so confused and actually a bit shocked as well about the whole thing. Now I'm going to get killed by a bowman. What do you bet? Yeah, that would not be too good. This guy's... Oh, never mind. He's dead. All right. So, yeah, this is going to be a pretty easy victory for us. But, unfortunately, there is also another vassal relatively close by. So, I'm hopeful that we won't lose too many units. And, hopefully, Morkan will not lose any either. But, uh, more than likely, he's going to lose quite a bit. Because, as you can see from the amount of bodies in the center here, it seems like a lot of them are red. Well, obviously, they're covered in blood. But, the point is, is that most of them are red. And, that means that a lot of Landians lost their lives here. And uh, I suppose the only thing I can hope for is that they did not get actually killed. And instead, they were just knocked unconscious or something like that. But uh, yeah, you can see here we lost... Wow, he lost 35 from his army. 17 of those were only recruits. Seven were levy crossbowmen, which is not a big deal. That is not a big deal at all. But in a very small army like his, it actually does make a pretty big difference because... He's got 90 total, so losing over a third of that, very, very harsh. And this guy apparently can't walk by my horse, uh, amusingly enough. But uh, yeah, anyway, that is indeed a victory for us. I'm surprised that we haven't had them running away. I mean, they are quite obviously running away. All right, so there's a victory for us. I don't really care about the renown and influence at this point. Uh, I just really want to take this guy prisoner, execute him as soon as I possibly can, and uh, hopefully then make it so that Morcon or Morcan or whatever whatever his name is, because there's there's two people. One is called Morcan and the other one is called Morcon, and I believe I've executed one of them, and this is the other. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of defectors from Vlandia, which is not exactly great, and I. Do I do have some space? Ah, I do have some space. So I guess what I will do is take a couple of people. Don't really want to take anything from the Imperials. So I will just take people from Batania at this point. Uh, not entirely sure if some of them will join me, but we can only try. There we go. All right. So anything else here? Yeah, I will take some food now. And I have actually been declining taking food because I have just had so much in my inventory. Okay, so Varmund, he is also a Vlandian defector, as you can see. He has a whole bunch of Vlandian units, 29 Vlandian recruits, and a number of others as well. And Morcon, as you can see right here, only has 28 units. So I guess we will be fighting... Oh, look, there's Elbert as well. There's a huge amount of defectors from Vlandia, and that has only made the Southern Empire just that much stronger. It really is grinding my gears, like no one's business, but... Ah, you, you can't do much about it, you know? If they want to do that, then that is up to them. But unfortunately, having them do that to a town such as this is making everything much, much harder than it has to be. Oh, there's there's Dothart again. Are you going to uh, take this now? Is he? Oh, uh, look at that. Someone actually did... Oh, Calatild is actually right here with a massive army. Okay, we could te technically take her on, but I personally don't want to do that. I would love to be able to starve them out and maybe, just maybe, have a situation where we can split them. And uh, that is generally what I've been trying to do most of the time with these armies, because they are very big, and being able to split them... Uh, how many do they have there? As you can see, they have three lords there and if we can split them we should be able to separate them very easily and take them down i mean it's the quintessential quintessential saying you know divide and conquer that that is very very true here and definitely something that i would like to 
try and make work, but it is highly unlikely that I will be able to get her into starvation mode that fast because she owns a town and that town is very well supplied. The last time I went there, there was so, so much food. It was very easy to get resupplied there. And Elbert, well, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, friend. So I will be taking them on. And there we go, 123 to deal with. And uh, bear in mind that they have 50-something Vlandian recruits, so most of what they have is literally nothing to worry about. So it should be pretty easy for us to achieve victory here. And uh, once again, we're just going to be moving our forces ahead. And uh, that's the thing. These kinds of battles are actually really good for leveling up my skills. And um, uh, that's what I try to do. Obviously, I try to use weapons that I don't usually use, so maybe I'll... You know, use my uh, two-handed axe a little bit sometimes. Most of the time, I will just try to level up my pole arm skill. Because I would like to be able to get pole arms to the next level, if at all possible. Like 125 or something like that, I think is the next level. So it would be quite fun to do that. And we'll just move our forces a little bit extra here. Because I'm actually attempting to take these guys on by myself. Which is actually not working out very well, as you can no doubt see. So yeah, I could technically use this as a thrusting weapon as well, as you can see right there. That was actually pretty nice. Piercing damage did a decent job. And I, am, I think I should put these guys into shield wall formation. And we might have some issues here. As you can see, these guys actually do have pole arms. Quite tricky to deal with. Ah, uh, I missed the archer. No, did not want to miss that archer. That guy is looking pretty good, so we need we need to eliminate him. Uh, I did a little bit of damage to him, but nothing, nothing spectacular. Let's tell my guys to charge in now, and we will hopefully be able to clear this up reasonably easily. And uh, we've also got to remember, by the way, this is also something that I should try to remind myself as well, but we've got to remember that, well, I'm dead. But anyway... <laughs> We've got to remember that the messages in the top right, the red ones do signify an enemy getting a kill on us, but we also have to remember that the white and red skulls change what kind of death that was, or what kind of elimination that was, should I say more accurately, because obviously the red skull indicates a kill, whereas the white skull indicates unconscious. And when I'm seeing a huge amount of red up in the right corner of the screen, just out of the corner of my eye while I'm riding around through the fields of battle, I think to myself, oh no, this is really bad. You know, we're losing a lot of units. But in actual fact, most of the time, most of those units are just knocked unconscious. And they actually don't, you know, they actually don't get removed from our, from our party in general. As you can see, we just lost 13. But in actual fact, we lost, what, 44? And, um, you know, 44 with those red banners coming down on the right side, I think to myself, oh no, that's really bad. And then I get a little bit panicky, you know, and I try to make sure that we don't lose any more. But, you know, that's the kind of thing that I got to get used to as well. But there you go. That is the last of her clan as well. She is the last of it. And uh, that was actually a Vlandian, as we know. So not very nice for them to do that. I gotta say, I feel very betrayed by that, but uh, well, there you go. That's, uh, that's how it is sometimes. That is how it is in, in wartime. People change sides all the time and, well, especially in this kind of environment, it is very volatile indeed. Anyway, I think that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.